So I've had my Hawk Shell 2019 four wheel camper for about a year now. In this video, I'd like to go over some of the things I like about the camper, some of the things I don't like about the camper, and how it stacks up against some of the other alternatives that I considered before I purchased this. First, the thing I like the most about this camper is how quick it is to set up. You undo the buckles on the outside, one person jumps in, pops it up, it might take a minute overall. Uh, I do a lot of different outdoor activities if we're looking for photos we want to take, hiking around, kayaking, whatever you want to do. I spend most of my time doing that. Then I pull into a suitable spot to camp in. A minute later, I could be in bed if that's what I want to do. Uh, second, I think that I, I really enjoy being able to stand up inside in a space that's dry, warm, just out of the elements. I'm six foot three and I can fit inside this thing standing up with room to spare. One of the things I really like about this camper is its low profile and how it sits on the truck. Uh, first, I had this on a Ford F-150. Now I have it on the uh, 2020 F-250. Both trucks handle it well. It's nice that it's it's not much wider or not wider at all than the truck. It doesn't stick out the back at all. And it's low profile, a, a low height on top of the truck cap. And really something I had not thought of um, was how nice this is to drive in the city. Uh, at the beginning of the year, I did a two week road trip across the country and we were able to park right downtown in New Orleans with this on the back of our F-150. I love having the uh, propane heater. Um, you can crank that thing on with a normal house thermostat. I've run it all night before, no problem. It sips propane. It comes with the two 10 pound tanks um, and I've never run out of both tanks. Uh, I think it's about a quarter tank in a night when it's down in single digits once uh, earlier this year. So you could really do an extended stay uh, kind of based on that usage. The heater really makes a difference and it, it makes us uh, that much more willing to go out and do a trip like this where we're in Vermont and it's uh, single digits or in the teens during the day um, and we're super comfortable. The other thing I really enjoy about this camper is the queen size bed. Um, my girlfriend and I can fit up there no problem with room to spare. I'm a little tall so sleeping uh, side to side uh, can get a little tight if you like to put your arms above your head or, or really, sh really stretch out. If I um, just lay straight with my arms up my sides, then I, I fit up there. But um, depending upon how you sleep, you might want to go for a queen size bed, or excuse me, a king size bed, because then that way you might be able to fit into the bed north to south and get an experience that's a little bit closer to home. One of the things I don't like about the queen size bed is the actual quality of the cushions. Uh, it's a hard board, and then it's these um, thinner foam cushions that come from four wheel camper. We solved this by putting a uh, memory foam topper on it. It was kind of the best balance of speed and comfort a lot of people online will recommend that you put a blow up mattress in there that's probably a little bit more comfortable the xbed duo or two xbed single person ones um, but we kind of opted for this because you don't have to blow it up and down uh, we don't have to worry about it. if we put our dog up there he's he's not going to puncture uh, the foam and it's a little bit quicker uh, overall i think one of the main reasons i went for this truck camper is how light it is uh, four-wheel campers may are all aluminum construction there's no wood in the frame uh, it makes a light camper overall, so then you have more room for stuff. My F-150 was about maxed out with this on the back. It was totally doable. It didn't stop us from going anywhere. Um, and that's probably why I went with this versus pretty much any other truck camper option out there on the market. The F-250, on the other hand, now I have a ton of extra load capacity, so I can load it down with water, wood, that kind of thing. In line with the uh, all aluminum part of it, it's nice to have a camper that I know is uh, going to be extremely durable. If you go online, um, they're, they're hard to get because they're so well sought after, but there, there are used four-wheel campers from the 80s, the 90s, the early 2000s. Um, these really hold up. We'll, we'll see if this one stands the test of time, but I'm, I'm confident it will. That aluminum flexes when you're driving in uh, tough conditions, and aluminum's not going to rot away like some wooden truck campers might. Right now, I have two 12-volt batteries in the camper. I've never needed for power. Um, I run a fridge for about a day or two at a time. I haven't done any extended uh, stays with the fridge yet, um, but it'll run the heater all week long. I do enough driving during the day that the alternator does charge the batteries and tops them off. Um, I haven't had any issues with that. Um, also, what's nice is four-wheel camper pre-wires these for solar. Down the road, I might look into adding some solar to the roof. So if I do one of uh, the camping stays where I'm in the same spot without moving for days at a time on the shore and the, uh, the outer banks, or maybe if I just go up to the mountains and want to hang out for a few days in the same spot, do some outdoor cooking, I might look into getting some solar um, to top off the, the batteries. But for now, the two 12 volts have been doing great. They run the heater. I've charged you know, a laptop or a phone, and, and that's really all I need. 
One of the things that I found with the camper is that the door doesn't seem to be of the best quality. I get leaking around the window and I've read online that other people have this issue. I haven't gotten around to resealing it yet, but I'm gonna add some sealant to it. Um, it really only happens if I wash the camper or if it rains hard, it doesn't leak a ton of water, but I do get water streaks going down the door um, if it's been wet. The other thing is that the screen door is awesome. I love having the option to do it. I'm getting cracking on the, the clear plastic on the door. It looks kind of cheap. Uh, I wish that there was kind of a stronger plastic or just a better setup overall. Um, it's a little more durable. Sometimes uh, I can have a hard time pushing up the, uh, the roof. Now, if there's nothing on the roof, it's just me. Um, I can get it up fairly easily. You gotta get kind of the right angle for the front part of it. But I could see if you're a little bit older, um, you have a disability, you're just not as strong, it, it might be harder to pop the roof up. You can remedy that by putting some stronger struts on the roof, but it'd be nice to see that come from factory so that it was just a little bit easier to pop the top. Um, if it snows out here, I gotta clear all the snow off before I'm able to uh, lift it up myself. If you come in here, you can kind of see, um, you have the furnace, and then on top of that, you get our, uh, little bit of storage so we have kind of odds and ends for camping that we keep in here um, and here is the uh, uh, 9 volt plug or excuse me the 12 volt plug you have some USB ports I went with two um, 12 volt batteries in this particular camper so what I did is I installed these little uh, they're, they're kind of hard to see but there's these little uh, metal handles that screw in on each side I just drilled those in with really small screws right into the top piece of wood here with carpet. And I used that to tie down a cheap Costway fridge, some kitchen gear. And then on this side, we have a, uh, a plastic container with a bunch of uh, camping gear, like a fire grate for outside, some fire gloves, things like that. And then here, either I'll put a Yeti cooler if I need the extra dry uh, storage or an extra cooler. Right now I have some light stands and um, chairs and other random things strapped down right uh, on this part of it. And then over here um, we have our little uh, luggable loo. This particular model you have a little back window and then you also have this, this side window here um, that opens up all the way. This is, this is half of it, it's kind of nice. And then the other half is behind the box here. Um, If you look this way, here's our queen size bed, extended all the way out, which is pretty nice. So to compare this model to other things that I considered, um, first I'll compare it to a fully built out four wheel camper. This is a Hawk shell model. It only comes with the uh, heater in it and the rest of it's blank. I like that because I can build it out with anything I want. Right now I've got the camping gear that spends 95% of the time in there. It's storage for it, it's tied down, ready to go. But I can swap that out with hunting stuff, fishing gear. Um, I used to haul a bunch of presents around the holidays. Um, really, it's a, it's a blank slate. If you go with one of the built out camp, campers, you probably have a little more convenience. You have a little stove ready there. You have a little bit of water. You have a little nicer place to sit in a table, um, but you give up a lot of storage capability. You can't set it up how you want it. And a big thing for me was I don't have to winterize this camper because I don't have a water system. Um, so it's really kind of a, what more floats your boat. The other thing too, is I had a lot of this camping gear already and um, going with a cheaper shell and then just outfitting it with the stuff I already owned was a better fit for me. Comparing a four wheel camper to a hard shell camper. I think a hard shell camper, um, I, I haven't owned one, but um, I'm sure it's probably maybe a little bit more comfortable on the inside. You don't have to pop it up and down. You don't have to deal with that. Um, it might be a little bit uh, easier to heat. Not that I have an issue heating this one, but I'm sure it's a little more efficient. But you give up a lot of maneuverability on the truck. Usually they're quite a bit heavier, um, so you're gonna have to have a stronger truck or a truck set up to carry that weight. Just something to think about. The four-wheel camper is definitely for people that wanna do dispersed camping, kinda get out there um, a little farther away from the road. Versus a hard shell camper, if I was uh, living out of the thing and camping a lot of our uh, campgrounds and. RV parks and then I might go with that yeah, if that was the case. So this is my first impressions after a year of owning this four-wheel camper. Uh, by no means a comprehensive review. If you have any specific questions about how I load it or exactly how long my batteries last, please feel free to leave a question down below in the comments. Thank you for watching.